Hello friends and welcome to Study IQ. My name is Dr. Mahipal Singh Rathod and in this lecture I will be discussing the operation Make Doot with you. This operation led to India's army controlling the Siachen glacier since 1984. In this video we will discuss why was it necessary for India to conquer or control one of the largest glaciers in the world where no one lives not even an animal can survive over there and there our brave soldiers are fighting temperatures of minus 40 degree centigrade why is this glacier so important for us what were the reasons behind india's capture of the siachen glacier so operation meghdoot is the operation in the kashmir region which precipitated the siachen conflict in 18 1984 the date was 13th april baisakhi day when this military operation began and it is one, one of the most unique operations in the world because it was launched at altitudes of over 5000 meters altitudes of over 22000 feet and above this has led to siachen become the world's highest battlefield nowhere in the world are military battles being fought or have been fought at such high altitudes till today the highest post in the entire world the highest military post is on the siachen glacier the bana top i will discuss about it later so this was operation make doot if you are asked in a very short manner before going into the details of the operation i would like to tell you that study iq has launched a variety of pen drive and tablet courses via which you can study for competitive exams sitting at your home thousands of students have benefited from our courses they have got the job of their choice in the past many years and you can also give them a try if you want to know more about them visit our website studyiq.com or call on these numbers these are all the courses ssc RBI, uh, IBPS bank exams, UPSC, IAS exam, optional courses for UPSC, then G Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh state PCS, KV exam, law, CLAT, and defense exams like NDA and CDS. Also for SSB. All the maps that I have shown in this lecture are for representational purpose. They are not official maps endorsed by the government of either country, Pakistan, India, or any other nation, and they are not for scale. They are not the actual scalable maps they are just for representational purpose to teach you about the topic so this is jammu and kashmir today the yellow and white colored portion is the area which is controlled by indian government this is the indian administered kashmir as you can call it and this is the pakistan occupied kashmir the one that you see in the light green color in the northern area the pinkish color that you see here that is occupied by china since the 1962 war this is the territory of aksai chin Now in between these three regions on the northern part lies this Siachen glacier this triangular uh, area this is the area of Siachen glacier so it is like a wedge it is just like a wedge between Pakistan occupied Kashmir and Chinese occupied Kashmir and it is on the tri junction of India Pakistan and China here so that this is very important strategically this Siachen glacier or this region if it would have been under the control of Pakistan they would have better access to china but since this area is under the control of india pakistan and uh, china they their communication their logistics are a bit difficult even till till this day although the karakoram highway is running but it gets a lot of landslides and that communication is still difficult the cpec the china pakistan economic corridor is uh, envisaging to make this has envisaged to make this corridor better for logistics between china and pakistan let's see how it pan outs So coming back to our topic of Siachen and Operation Meghdoot now you have seen where Siachen glacier lies this is Leh this is Srinagar this is Jammu so this is the northernmost territory of India as of today the one which we control Siachen glacier zooming in to the same map again this is the line of control coming from here down south you uh, I'm sorry I, I didn't mention the line of control here this is the line of control so this is the line of control here and it is coming till this point called nj9842 so this was the point till which it was fixed in 1949 when the karachi agreement was signed after the war of 47 48 and uh, the first kashmir war that is called if you want to know more about that watch my video about kashmir you can find it in the history playlist of our channel study iq so that war of 47 48 ended in the karachi agreement of 49 in that karachi agreement the line of control was fixed from the international border in jammu till this point nj9842 it is just a cartographical point it's a geographical point on the map north to this point this territory was 
not demarcated why because it is a very desolate area it is very inaccessible there is only large glaciers and high mountains no one even lives there there are hardly any villages near the siachen glacier because it is a very uh, distant area at the height is too much uh, pop human population cannot survive over there for long time periods that is why it is a very desolate area so what pakistan did they said by themselves that we are extending this loc from this point nj9842 to karakoram pass this karakoram pass is the one that connects china and pakistan it is one of the most important passes today in the karakoram range it connects china and pakistan the karakoram highway passes from this so they said that this area west of this line is all under the control of pakistan actually no one was having control over here okay this is the triangle between indira kohl karakoram pass and nj9842 India also did not have any army here Pakistan also did not have any army because of it the very inaccessible terrain and the nature of the place but Pakistan had claimed this line via the maps they were publishing in 1960s and 70s so this was the basis of this entire siachen dispute this is siachen from the satellite this is a photograph taken from the satellite siachen means the place of wild roses in the local language this uh, word siachen means a, pl a place where wild roses grow abund abundance of wild roses so this is the glacier you see uh, although this must be very white white light is reflected so this is the glacier that is coming down as you can see here it is turning into black this black is all the soil and the silt and this white is the ice so the snow that melts from the tops of the mountains it comes down in the form of a glacier slowly moving down and this leads to the beginning of nubra river so siachen glacier is the beginning of which river in india nubra nubra flows into shok shok flows into indus and all these are the branches just like a river has a tributary this glacier also is having a tributary so these are all the tributaries that i am marking right now all these are tributaries india is controlling all the mountain tops as of today the, this line that i have drawn this is approximately the line which shows the highest point of these mountains and india is controlling these mountains just west of the glacier so we are controlling the mountain tops we have posts all over these mountain tops and thus the glacier is our under indian army's control again here is another map you can see this is the line of control the dotted line that is coming and you can see here this is the point marked as cross this is the nj9842 and from here this mountains that i showed you in the previous picture that is the saltoro range these are the saltoro mountains above which there is the karakoram range here is the karakoram range above this is the saltoro this is the saltoro range and just west of the saltoro range this area this area is under pakistan occupied kashmir today but this one that you see all these names siala bilafondla these are the ranges and these are the passes in the saltoro range and india controls all of these i'll tell you again and again these things don't don't worry if you don't understand right now but just remember this name you have to remember this name saltoro range because this is very important saltoro range okay and as you can see siachen glacier it melts down and begins nubra river begins here nubra flows into shok and shok it flows into see here it flows into indus the crest of this saltoro ridge ranges from 5500 to 7700 meters this means an altitude of more than 18000 to up to 25000 feet just to get you an idea about the height mount everest is at a height of approximately 29000 meters uh, what is it 8800 something meters so you can imagine this mountain range is also very high it is not a small mountain range the saltoro range the major passes on this ridge which india controls today these are the major locations indira kohl which is now the northernmost point india controls siala bilafondla gyongla the average winter snowfall is more than 1000 cm or 35 ft more than 6 people can be buried under the snow if you stack them one above the other so much snowfall happens only in the winters 35 ft imagine so much of snow falling on your tent where you have to stay and you have to take care of the border you have to be always aware of the uh, of the enemy whether he is firing whether he is coming up the slope and the temperatures can dip up to minus 50 degree centigrade in the winters and it never goes more than minus 10 or minus 15 even in the summers it will be minus 10 minus 15 and winters it can go up to minus 60 minus 70 also sometimes so this is the temperature range that the army soldiers are facing over at siachen just as i uh, wrote down the names in the previous slide you can see them here again this triangle as you can see here is the karakoram pass this is the point nj9842 here and from the north of the nj9842 this green colored line was the one that pakistan wanted they showed it on their maps as that we are controlling this entire siachen 
बट इंडिया कैप्चर्ड ऑल दिस माउंटेन टॉप्स इंदिरा कोल सियाला ला इज एक्चुअली अ पास सो इन बिटवीन सो इन बिटवीन टू माउंटेन्स देर विल बी अ पास सो दिस इज अ माउंटेन पास एज वी कॉल इट इन हिंदी दर्रा और इफ देर आर टू टॉल पीक्स एंड स्लाइट डिप्रेशन इज देयर इन बिटवीन दैम दिस विल बी अ कोल सो इंदिरा कोल नॉर्दर्न मोस्ट पॉइंट देन सियाला बिलाफोंडला ग्योंगला दीज आर द मेजर पॉइंट्स वेर फाइटिंग टू प्लेस और वेर इंडिया कंट्रोल्ड द बॉर्डर एंड दिस येलो कलर्ड लाइन इज कॉल्ड एज ए जी पी एल एक्चुअल ग्राउंड पोजिशन लाइन एक्चुअल ग्राउंड पोजिशन लाइन दिस इज लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल बिटवीन इंडिया एट इंडिया कश्मीर एंड द पाकिस्तान ऑक्यूपाइड कश्मीर हियर इन द वेस्ट साइड इन द ईस्ट साइड सॉरी यू विल सी द एल ए सी दैट इज द लाइन ऑफ एक्चुअल कंट्रोल बिटवीन इंडिया एंड चाइना ऑक्यूपाइड कश्मीर so this is lac this is loc and this is agpl so you should know the difference between all three of these agpl now this agpl starts from this nj9842 point and it heads north and northwest in a northwest direction and it touches all these highest peaks yongla bilafonda siala indira kol of the saltoro range so these are all the passes or the topmost points in the saltoro range mountain range and to the east of this range lies the siachen glacier so here are the mountains then here is the glacier this glacier is like this and pakistan army is on the western slope of this mountain of of this range so the pakistan army is somewhere here where i am marking the spot right now on the map so the entire conflict started from the 1970s when european mountaineers wanted to climb the karakoram and the saltoro mountains European mountaineers were very adventurous they had already climbed all of the alps they had climbed all the major mountain ranges in north america europe and they were looking for excitement and the world's tallest mountains are in the karakoram and the himalayas so they started asking for permission from the pakistani government that we want to climb karakoram or the saltoro mountains and pakistan was repeatedly giving them permissions now this was angering india because why are these mountaineers asking for permission from pakistan and why is pakistan giving them permission to an area which no one is going neither the indian army nor the pakistani army and it is actually technically disputed no one is living there so no one should interfere in that area but then india also started giving permissions to mountaineers to climb from their side although very few people asked for uh, permission from india side because you see the slopes of this saltoro range on our side on the eastern side they are very st steep and on the pakistani side the western side they were little gradual so it is easier to climb from the pakistani side than from the indian side so everyone wanted to climb from the pakistani side so these polish and german climbers they set many record they even climb during the winters it's a very interesting story about all those polish mountaineers who wanted to climb k2 and all these mountain tops in the karakoram and uh, saltoro range so in the 1970s pakistan had commenced permitting foreign mountaineering expeditions and sometimes pakistani army officers also accompanied these mountaineering expeditions so this angered india now in 1977 a german team sought indian army's permission because they wanted to climb from the indian side of the saltoro ridge and their maps were clearly showing entire siachen as pakistani territory also few american maps had started showing siachen as pakistan's area now this started uh, some uh, disturbance in the indian top brass the indian army officers were now very vigilant especially colonel uh, narinder bul kumar colonel narinder bul kumar of the indian army he was an expert of high altitude warfare and under his leadership indian army now also started allowing mountaineering expeditions to the glacier approaching from its side and along with the other mountaineers mostly indian army also sent its own expeditions so under the leadership of bul kumar colonel bul kumar Indian expeditions went to Teram Kangri and other mountains also and this went on for almost 6 to 7 years for the next next 6 7 years it was like which mountaineering team went to further uh, further areas further peaks who climbed the uh, more number who climbed more number of peaks but this strategy was not working or it was not long term why because both the sides realized that at the end of the day you need military presence permanent military presence over there just sending mountaineering teams to climb the mountains does not make the mountain yours although you can theoretically claim that yes we have climbed this we have given permission this is our but you do not have actual control neither india had actual control nor pakistan had ground troops over there they were both sending patrols indian military was also sending its patrol and these patrolling parties had to face such hostile conditions they were as good as climbing mount everest because they needed logistic support and the indian air force helped them here they landed the first uh, helicopter on the siachen glacier on 6th october 1978 because 
heavy uh, equipment and everything had to be transported via air it could not be carried on the shoulders there is no road leading up to siachen at that time there was no road leading up to the siachen base camp today there is one which the military uses but at that time reaching the siachen base the place where the glacier melts and water starts flowing even that was a big task it is a very remote area i can't even stress the fact if you have been to ladakh any one of you have been to ladakh then you will understand what i am speaking about it is such a remote area so the indian air force and the indian army both started uh, a small kind of operation over there where they were trekking or sending patrol parties they were patrolling they were leaving messages that this peak belongs to india pakistan was also doing the same that this peak belongs to pakistan their soldiers were also patrolling finally by 1983 pakistan planned that we need to set up our base near the top of the saltoro ridge that we need to set up military bunkers so that we can dominate the position now in military terms whoever has the height has the advantage you always need the higher position in military warfare because you can fire down and it is very easier to attack uh, easier to stop an attacking force which is coming up a mountain on the other hand if you have to conquer a mountain top it is very difficult so in 1983 pakistani army started a plan called ababil and they ordered a lot of military uh, equipment for cold weather because you cannot survive their soldiers could not survive the cold temperature at the top of the mountain without special gear like this so they needed special balaclavas they needed special jackets special gloves special boots and special goggles as well they had ordered all this kit from a supplier in london because this was not available in india or pakistan and they had already ordered it at the same time indian military also thought that now the time is correct that we also have to Uh, start uh, some planning for capturing the topmost peaks of the saltoro range they also went to the same supplier in london and they also asked for the same equipment now that supplier told them that we already have a big order from the pakistani army or the indian officers came to know about it somehow so this led india to preempt its attack or its capture of the peaks india chose the day of baisakhi that was 13th of april 1984 and later on many of the memoirs of the indian or the pakistani army generals have said that india reached the peaks only few days or few hours before the pakistani team it is said that the pakistani team had uh, the pakistani army had planned to reach there on the 17th of april to conquer the tops and settle their own camps over there but indian army reached there first on the 13th of april and this is how by intelligence reports as well as sheer luck indian army could reach there before pakistani army but reaching the mountain tops or the glacier was a different task and holding the position was a different task as soon as indian soldiers reached there some of them were uh, facing frostbites uh, a couple of soldiers even died due to extreme uh, conditions of mountain sickness and the operation was in jeopardy because the weather was not clear for many days but after few days the weather cleared and indian army slowly gradually in the next coming days and weeks they captured all the passes the bila fondla indira kol and the uh, gyongla etc the pakistani army at that time tried to come up the slopes there was fighting at that time india was holding an advantageous position on the top of the ridge and they successfully repelled the pakistani attack this was the highest fighting that ever took place it the fighting took place at more than 5500 meters 6000 meters the soldiers of kumau regiment and ladakh scouts were the main ones who took part in operation megdu they were the ones who trekked up the siachen glacier and to these all these posts in the mountains in such harsh cold conditions and this was the map again i am showing you the map because you have to understand it again and again this is siachen glacier the siachen glacier is melting here it is leading to the nubra river nubra flows into shok shok further flows into indus this blue colored line is the one that indian army is holding today the one that i am marking right now this is the agpl this is almost 100 kilometers 100 or 110 kilometers long and it starts from the point nj984 and it is going up to the indira kol this is the indira kol the karakoram pass is here and this makes this triangular area the area of siachen glacier now because we are holding the topmost areas we are holding the crescent or the the topmost ridge of the saltoro range we have an advantageous position the pakistani army is somewhere down here on the slopes of the saltoro range and we have an advantageous position because it is easier to dominate if you have the higher position in warfare and this area is also secure because we have total control over here now understand if china 
has complete control of Siachen Glacier or Pakistan has complete control of Siachen Glacier, it becomes easier for them to coordinate and easier for them to attack India because once this Saltoro range is conquered, you can easily come down Siachen Glacier down here and somewhere here is the Khardungla and you can come down to Leh. So Leh can be attacked, Ladakh can be attacked easily if Saltoro range is conquered. So that is why holding this Saltoro range, holding this Siachen Glacier is very important for India and its security. Pakistan even till today claims that this line, the one that joins Karakoram Pass here to NJ9842, this is the actual border, but this is on paper, this is not the actual ground uh, control. And Pakistan wants this area to be demilitarized. Again and again, they are saying that demilitarize, pull back the soldiers from Siachen. Today, the Indian Army deployment is up to forward positions along what is known as AGPL. I've already told you about this. Up to 10 infantry battalions, each of the Indian Army and the Pakistani Army are deployed at altitudes up to 6,400 meters, 21,000 feet. These are the conditions that our soldiers face. This is a typical photograph. This is a typical day for a soldier on Siachen. White ice, white snow as far as your eyes can see. So much of snow that your eyes can be blinded and hence you have, you have to always wear snow goggles. You have to always wear a balaclava, a special jacket so that you don't freeze to death. You can never remove your gloves unless you want your fingers to be frostbitten and then they have to be chopped off to save your hand. And similar thing with the boots, if you don't wear these special boots, if you lose a shoe or a boot, then your fingers can, the, the, toe, the toes can go into frostbite and then the toes have to be removed. Maybe even the entire foot has to be removed. If they go on patrols like this one, they are going on a patrol right now. Although they don't have weapons with them, but they are, usually they will have a rifle with them as well. Along with their heavy rucksack, all this material, the, the snow axis that you see in their hands and they will carry a rope so that no one will fall down on the other side and or someone can be picked up. A rope is very necessary. So they are as good as climbing Everest every day. The soldiers, the brave soldiers of Indian Army, even Pakistani Army, they are also facing the same conditions. Pakistan later attempted to capture the higher peaks twice. In 84, they lost in Operation Meghdoot. Then in 87, also again, they attacked. When this attack took place in 87, General Parvez Musharraf, who later on became the president of Pakistan, he was the leader, he was a brigadier I think at that time when this attack in 87 took place and it was his idea that we will capture, capture Siachen and the higher peaks of Saltoro from uh, Indian Army. So they attacked in 1987 and they failed, again they attacked in 1989 and they failed. So this operation, this operation in 87 for some time the Pakistani army succeeded in capturing two higher posts, they were the Qayyad, uh, the qayyad -e azam it was named after qayyad -e azam and uh, this qayyad -e azam post, this qayyad post was captured again by Indians under the brave leadership of Subedar Bana Singh and after the Bana Singh who bravely defeated the Pakistani forces this post was named as Bana Post. If you have seen that movie Lakshya where Ritik Roshan climbs a sheer cliff in the dark in the dead of the night imagine that same scenario Bana Singh did with his soldiers but re re reduce the temperature to at least minus 40 and then put in some snow, some blizzard and make the conditions 100 times harsher. That was what was achieved by Bana Singh and the brave soldiers. They climbed up to the height of 6,500 meters and above and they captured this Kayad post and it was named as Bana Post in his honor. And this operation in 87 was called Operation Rajiv. It was named after uh, one of the young lieutenants, uh, Lieutenant Rajiv Pandey who died earlier to ca in, in an attempt to capture that post. Bana Singh was awarded the Paramvir Chakra, the highest gallantry award in India and that post is still the highest battlefield post. It's actually 6,750 meters, not 6,500 as I said earlier, it, 6,749 meters. Even today, Indian soldiers are sitting there at the Bana post holding the security of the nation in their hands. The second assault in 1989 was also unsuccessful. This was also a small attempt, but the ground position did not change. India had an advantageous position sitting on the top and they repelled the Pakistani attack. Even in 1999, General Parvez Musharraf was the chief of the army. It was his brainchild. It was his plan to attack India near Kargil and to capture Siachen. Again, the ultimate goal was Siachen. At that time also, 87 also, Parvez Musharraf was the leading officer when this Siachen attack took place, he was the one who ordered that attack and again the Kargil war was also because of him. So it was his strategy to take back Siachen from India. That is the importance of Siachen that Pakistan has waged an entire war just to capture the Siachen glacier. 
again you can see this agpl here the yellow colored ground position line the position did not change and here you can better appreciate the terrain because see this is the glacier and these are all the mountains the mountains are so high that the mountain tops are always under snow cover even in summers this is a photograph from from summers during winter this will be all white even the valleys are filled with snow this is a photograph from summer time so you can see the remoteness because everything is mountain tops so there is hardly any population here no one lives here even where the siachen glacier ends for at least 10 kilometers there is no village the panamic village is further up ahead in the valley of nubra river coming to the challenges at siachen now siachen is such a place where the challenge is not the enemy it is not the pakistani soldier but it is the weather it's the climate it's the terrain which is the enemy of the soldier it's the enemy number 1 because when you live at such a height where human body is not meant to survive if humans were meant to survive over there humans would be living there there would have been villages on siachen but we do not have villages on glaciers anywhere in the world because human body cannot tolerate such altitudes after for a long period of time so there are two types of altitude sickness one is acute that happens when you suddenly climb uh, altitudes of over 2500 meters and the other one is chronic so soldiers who are living there on the siachen they have chronic altitude sickness because of living there for a long time they are living at heights of 5000 to 6000 meters and chronic mountain sickness starts from just 2500 meters so imagine they are living at the dub at double the height where you get ams acute mountain sickness or even chronic mount altitude sickness so high altitude pulmonary edema and cerebral edema are two major risks pulmonary edema means swelling of the lungs water gets accumulated in the lungs and cerebral edema means swelling in the brain the brain lining and water can get accumulated over there these are two very dangerous conditions they are life threatening and this one pulmonary edema is one of the leading causes for fatalities among soldiers at such high altitudes then there are some other challenges like fatigue you cannot do uh, as much work as you are able to do on plains uh, or or near the sea coast because your efficiency will not be more than 50 60% at such high altitudes the oxygen level is very low and as such even if you are in the best of shape you have a awesome stamina still you will struggle at those heights if you have ever been to uh, higher mountains if you have ever been to the mountains in himalayas at tourist destinations you might understand what i am talking about it is very difficult to walk on staircases etc when you go to uh, tourist resorts in the mountains these hill stations like uti manali they are situated at altitudes of around 2000 meters and just double or triple that altitude that is the amount of fatigue that a person will face there is loss of appetite you cannot eat food properly the food will not be digested properly there will be memory loss there will be sleep disturbance you cannot sleep at such altitudes there will be a state of confusion in the mind so there are a lot of neural problems as well then there is the problem of frostbite if you keep your hand out in the open even for 30 seconds you will suffer from frostbite there will be palpitations and then the greatest challenge is the avalanches when the snow falls down all together you have you can google or youtube the videos of avalanches or landslides you will understand what i am talking about these are the biggest risks and they have killed hundreds of our soldiers in 2016 the last major avalanche took place when uh, many soldiers were buried under many feet of snow and in 2010 the pakistan on the pakistani side there was a huge avalanche which killed more than 100 soldiers or so of the pakistani army so hundreds of soldiers of india and pakistan have died in avalanches as well as all these medical problems the logistical supply is made via these helicopters of uh, they are called in indian army they are called cheeta or chetak so these helicopters supply every day from the leh airport they fly over to the siachen base camp from there they will supply materials to the uh, army army uh, check po army posts on all the top of the mountains indian army has also positioned some artillery on these mountains to protect uh, from pakistani aircraft so there are these zu232 anti aircraft guns then there is this surface to air missile then there are these mortars so th this is the kind of light artillery that has been placed and this is helpful against any oncoming pakistani attack or aircraft that will try to attack these posts but what is the cost that india and pakistan are facing due to the battle at siachen or this conflict that has been going on since the past 34 years it began in 1984 and it has catapulted siachen into world's highest battle zone it has demonstrated the limits to which human endurance and military ingenuity can be pushed 
An estimated 2,700 Indian and Pakistani troops have lost their lives so far. Of, according to the official figures given in the Indian Parliament in answer to a question in 2016, till 2015 the figure was 900 plus Indian soldiers. It was 920 something. So 900 plus Indian soldiers have laid down their lives in Siachen, according to official government data. And the, the this is the number of soldiers who have died due to medical reasons. This is not the ones who have died fighting. And apart from that, there are few soldiers who died fighting with the Pakistani army. So the number of soldiers who have died fighting is very less, but the number of soldiers who have died due to medical reasons is very high. And both India and Pakistan have combined lost more than 2,500 soldiers on the slopes of these mountains, on the slopes of the Siachen Glacier. Indian Army spends approximately 1 crore rupees every day just to maintain the Siachen posts, to get the supplies over there, the helicopter sorties, to get the food over there. To maintain the security of Siachen, it cost around 1 crore rupees. This uh, figure is not available officially. It was given by one of the retired generals of the army who gave an interview at one point of time. This is not the official figure, okay? But he said that approximately 1 crore rupees is spent every day. So it is a question for both India and Pakistan, two developing countries, that whether they can afford to spend so much money fighting each other, spending to maintain soldiers on top of world, one of the world's highest peaks. On the other hand, both these countries do not have uh, education for everyone, they don't have portable water for everyone, and then they are spending crores and crores on uh, stationing soldiers at the heights of 5000 or 6000 meters. Now your opinion could be different, My could, mine could be different, personally I feel India has to sustain military at Siachen because Siachen's strategic importance cannot be overlooked. Even the government of India and Indian Army have the same belief that Siachen's strategic importance is so much that we have to support it at any cost. Even I am a believer in that philosophy because once we bring down our soldiers from the heights of Siachen, definitely Pakistani Army will try to capture Saltoro range somehow. That is my personal opinion. I have given you all the facts and figures. You can form your own opinion. But the main reason is the strategic one. And another one is that the China-Pakistan link. China can also attack from the other side. It can also come down via the Saltoro range or the Siachen glacier onto the area of Leh. Now often Siachen is called as the low hanging fruit. What does it mean? Just like a ripe fruit that is hanging on a tree which can be plucked anytime. It is said that in the India-Pakistan uh, bilateral issues, the Kashmir conflict, Siachen is a low hanging fruit that India or Pakistan can pluck this fruit anytime. They can simply withdraw from Siachen and it will be a great start to the peace process. This is what it means. Many of the analysts have called it a low hanging fruit. I don't believe in it. Maybe you do. So you have to justify your answer, whatever you believe in. And I think that the strategic location of Siachen does not guarantee that anyone will leave it alone. It either be it India or Pakistan or China, someone has to occupy it and our soldiers have given their sac their blood. We have sacrificed hundreds of soldiers just to capture those heights so that the security of our great nation can be maintained and it has to be maintained. Maybe down the line, if the Kashmir issue is resolved, if there is a greater political uh, solution to the Kashmir entire Kashmir issue, then maybe Siachen can be resolved. But until that day, our soldiers have to maintain our security from Siachen. With this, I end this lecture. You can give me your feedback in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching this. Jai Hind.